Hi guys, it's Mary, and it is Saturday night at 7 o'clock, so let's have us a little video, shall we? Let me uh, take one second to refresh my screen off to the left here and be sure that we're actually transmittalating into the ethers. Because otherwise, you know, I'm just talking to myself, and, and that's just kind of a known thing that you really shouldn't do. Oh, you really shouldn't do that. Well, I see some folks are watching. Thanks. We'll get some comments coming up here pretty quick. Hi, Amy. Hi, Kathy. Thank you. I got your message. I'm I'm glad that you uh, you liked everything, and I hope you had a good vacation. Um, and there, I'll be sending you an email a little bit later. Hi, Patricia. Hi, Pam. Hey, Jean. Thank you, and and uh, Sharon. Glad you could join. Say hi to Donna for me, Jean. Uh, hey, Terry. Thank you for joining. Hi, Karen. How are you today? Um, I hope you all have been having a good weekend and that it's kind of being fall where you are, not a blizzard. I, I don't know where everybody's from, but hopefully you're not in a blizzard. Hopefully you're not burning up like California. God, that poor state. That poor state. Uh, hey, Tanya. Hi, Marianne. Hi, Deborah. Thank you, Jean. All right, well, let's go ahead and get started. Um, this is the card that I gave you the sneak peek of this morning. You can see it's a bit collage -y. Um Just fair warning, you may see a few more collage cards in the next two or three weeks. Um, I'm doing a presentation at Brian King's World Card Making Day event right before on stage, and I'm talking about doing collages because, you know, that's kind of my thing. Hey, Donna. Ah, happy Canadian Thanksgiving to you. Hi, Linda. Hi, Lynn. Um... So anyway, there's going to probably be a few more because I think I'm shy a few samples. <laughs> um, but this is the Yummy Christmas stamp set. And you can see it right here. This is a standalone stamp set in the holiday catalog. But interestingly, this gingerbread house, the gumdrop, the holly, and the tree all coordinate perfectly with the cuckoo clock dies that are in the annual catalog. And... The Cuckoo Clock dies are available as a bundle with a 10% savings with the Cuckoo For You stamp set from the annual catalog. So if you get the bundle, you save 10% and you can automatically die cut several of the images in the Yummy Christmas stamp set. So kind of a win, 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 win thing. All right, so let's go ahead. We'll get started. I'll show you the inside real quick like a bunny. Um, there is a lot of coloring on here, so if you like to color, this is your card. If you don't like to color, uh, do it anyway, because it's worth it. It's cute. But I have done some pre-coloring and cutting just to, you know, make it so that you aren't here for six and a half hours today. Uh, yes, I know, right? Think of all the things you're going to miss. So many things, a Amy. So many things. Hey, Carol. Glad you could join us. Hi, Alicia. Ah, had to break out a sweater. I know, I've been uh, wearing my hoodie out to the barn in the morning. It's kind of nice. All right, I've got some uh, pieces of cardstock and stuff here because that seems like the right thing to do. And all of these will be on my blog tomorrow. I've got a little bit of paper. This is from the Night Before Christmas DSP, and it's in uh, basically a cherry cobbler. And this is going to set aside for our envelope flap. My card base is crumb cake at four and a quarter by 11, scored and folded at five and a half. And then we have some pieces and parts here. I have gone with a Mossy Meadow Very Vanilla Cherry Cobbler, uh, kind of traditional. I've been a little non-traditional in the fat past few days, but this is pretty straight up Christmas colors. Um, so I've got a couple of mats in Mossy Meadow and some Very Vanilla panels, and then a few other things right here. For example, this is a square of Very Vanilla that I embossed with the hammered 3D metal embossing folder and then cut it down to size. Remember I like to do that because when you emboss, especially in the 3D um, embossing folders, um, it tends to stretch that that the fibers of the cardstock a little bit and so it can get a little bit cattywampus and it can change your measurements. So I like to cut first if I can a little bit bigger and then cut down to my final size. Hey Tanya, are you going to be at uh uh, that's good. I'm assuming that that means you're going to be at Atlanta's on stage and at the event. So that's awesome. All right. And then I have um, stamped in, okay, come here, in Tuxedo Black Memento Ink, I stamped three each of the Holly images 
and the trees from the Yummy Christmas, and then I cut them with that matching die that I just showed you. And I've used my um, light and dark mossy meadow for the leaves and the trees, light and dark cherry cobbler for the um, holly berries, and then my light and dark soft suede to color the trunks. Now, I wanna show you, I did leave one little bit. Um, hi, Cindy. Hi, Sue. Gorgeous day in Central Florida. Does that mean it's only 93 and 108% humidity? Is that what it's doing down there? Anyway, I wanted to show you, I left a couple of things open. So first off, I'm going to um, color my ornaments. And all I did was just use the bullet tip of my um, real, uh, my Cherry Cobbler Stampin' Blend. And I'm just kind of randomly picking you know how what's weird is the harder you try to be random, the the less random it becomes. Does that make sense? So I end up with red things next to each other in ways that I didn't want or not next to each other when they should have been. So I just used the bullet tip of the, uh, this is actually the light one. You could have used the dark one if you wanted. And then I've got my dark pineapple punch. And I'm going to color those other ones. And then I'm going to show you a little trick with the Delicata ink and a blender pen, and we're going to make us some gold garlands. Okay. So we have some red and gold ornaments. Well, I guess red and pineapple, but who's going who's gonna to bicker about that? Blowing snow and road closures in North Dakota. No, 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 no. You're welcome to that, too. Mm-mm. Don't like blowing snow, don't like road closures. I've been stuck a few times when I didn't want to be, so. Anyway, hi Eunice from British Columbia. Okay, so I have the Golden Glitz Delicata Metallic Ink Pad, and I have a blender pen. And all I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna use that ink pad, and I'm gonna pick up some of that ink with my blender pen and color these garlands on these trees. And then I'm going to set it aside for a second while I do a little assembling and let it dry good. Remember, we've talked about the fact that the Delicata ink takes a few more, a little bit longer to, to uh, dry than the regular ones. Well, Mary, it certainly could be white snow, but in this case, it's gold garland. I decided it was gold garland. So, you know, it could have been white snow, but in this case, it is gold garland. And the fun thing is, of course, it could also be silver garland, and it could also be copper garland. So, certainly up to you. But I kind of like the gold, mossy meadow, cherry cobbler combination. So there we go. And there's number three. This is easy peasy and a really fun way to use the Delicata ink to get it in places without just straight up stamping an image. All right. And one more to go without getting my big old finger in it. Alrighty. Okay, there we go. So let's put this away before I stick my hand in it. And we'll set these aside. Do you need to pick them up with the tweezers? No, but it makes it easier for me to not, not put my hand in it. Okay, so let's use some liquid glue and do a little bit of hearing. Thanks, Eunice. I like Gold Garland, too. Do you guys remember back before it was politically and environmentally incorrect to use that, um, the, the rain, the silver rain stuff that you put on, and it was these long, long strips of just, like, it looked like aluminum foil, but it wasn't. It was probably something that if you ingested it gave you cancer of everything. But I used to love that stuff. That was so great. The hardest part was remembering whether you put it on before the ornaments or after the ornaments. I'm pretty certain it was after the ornaments. All right, so I've just um, adhered my 3D, my hammered metal embossed panel to its mat, and I'm going to do the same. It was tinsel, but it wasn't like the tinsel in long, like garland tinsel. It, maybe it's the it, it was all individual pieces and you tossed them up until you were too tired of doing that and then you tossed five or 1200 at the same time. I used to get a little more impatient than my grandmother liked. 
My grandmother always had a flocked tree. We had a natural tree, but my grandmother and my grandfather, my grandparents, I guess you could say my grandparents, had a flocked tree with silver and clear, and I remember pink on it for some reason. It was always very pretty and very elegant, very pretty and very elegant. And it was, uh, it was fun. I used to like to go get the Christmas tree. Okay, now what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little dry fitting and a little stamping. So let me pull out my holly image. What I want to do, let me see if you can see it here. They call them icicles. I think that's right, icicles. It was like Easter grass, but sparkly, and it was straight, not crinkly. But yes, I think you're right. It was icicles. Okay, take a look here. Let me see if I can point it out to you. The little garland of holly berries, holly sprigs here, there are actually five images. Three of them are the ones that I've cut out and popped up with dimensionals. And then I've got two that are stamped onto the card front. Okay, just another way of getting layers for a collage kind of an effect. So I'm going to do a little bit of dry fitting. I'm going to close my glue. Delicately put the strands on. And yeah, I'm afraid I became a willy-nilly person pretty fast because I got really tired of it. It was like, okay, this was fun, and yet now it isn't. All right, now I'm going to use my um, Stamparatus. I don't know why I put it on a block. Probably because I'm yucking instead of, you know, paying attention to what I'm doing. I'm going to move my card panel out a little ways. I've got the uh, the new laminated grid grid foam pad on here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to locate where I want my middle strip because what I want is for my holly berries to be right under that. Okay, so I'm just going to. Here comes the hardest part of this. Don't be freaked out by this. Okay. Don't be freaked out by this because it's really not very difficult. The hardest part is let, getting the stamp to let go of your finger. Okay? So I'm just going to lay it right there and then move, bump everything wrongly. I'm going to lay it right there and then just move that strip out of the way, just like that, and pick up my stamp. Uh, and then I'm going to do this. We got a puppy, and every time we got to the close, he tore a jack. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I'm pretty certain a dog would have mm -hmm, had a problem with that. Hey, Kay. Uh, thank you, Sue. That's very sweet. Hi, Jenny. Appreciate you. Okay, this is um, Tuxedo Black Memento Ink. And I'm just going to give it a little stamp. Yeah, I'm going to give it a little stamp. And that is plenty. So now I'm going to wipe off my stamp put my strip back again because I'm I'm measuring essentially without actually measuring and I'm gonna put the other holly branch on like that pick up the strip and stamp that again okay there we go easy and also peasy I hope I'm up for the whole um, teach people how to do a collage thing because it's that's kind of a hard thing to say because to me it seems kind of I'm afraid everybody's going to be sitting in the audience going well geez Mary duh that is just so duh Mary so hopefully hopefully it'll be worth the time I, I hope so hi Karen I'm glad you joined appreciate you all right so now I'm pulling out I'm going to do a little coloring I said I wouldn't, but I'm going to have to. I've got my light and dark mossy meadow. And I'm just going to do my really, you know, high tech, really artistic. My goodness, I should have been an artist instead of an engineer. I'm going to color first with the light. Come around the edges with the dark. And then spread it all around. Yeah, that is so artistic. Pretty soon, they'll probably be calling me to commission stamp 
and blend artwork, I'm pretty certain. And we'll just do that a couple of times. You can see why I did a few ahead because um, you could also just go and add some water to a bag of quick read and watch it. It would be just about that interesting. All right, so here's a completely off the wall question. Have you guys eaten parsnips? Anybody eaten parsnips? I ate parsnips tonight. Actually, the first time I ever ate parsnips was at the Publix. You know how they do the, um, well, it's our grocery store for those of you who don't know, and they do um, like cooking. They have recipes, sample recipes, where they're obviously trying to sell you products, food. <laughs> and uh, so they had this thing, it was called uh, roast chicken and root vegetables. And it was pretty good, and it had parsnips in it, so I made sure that he gave me some parsnips. And also, this is amazing. Do you guys like, I don't like radishes, okay? I'm not a radish eater, which is unfortunate because they're really, really um, fun to grow because they grow really fast, and so it's like instant gratification. But then you have all this uh, whole parcel of, a whole parcel of radishes, and if you don't like radishes, what do you do? Well, it turns out, I didn't know this, maybe you did, again with the duh, Mary, it turns out that if you roast radishes, they stop tasting like radishes. They taste like sort of oddly flavored potatoes. They're, it was weird. Also, parsnips are good. I didn't know that. I thought parsnips were going to be like turnips or rutabagas, which I've also never had. But I don't think I like them. So I was prepared to not like parsnips. But it turns out parsnips are actually more like carrots than rutabagas. Put them in homemade chicken soup when they're available. My mom makes candied parsnips. Oh, yes. Oh, wait, I gotta kill it. Wait, I gotta kill a mosquito. It's probably got the West Nile virus or Triple E. Shoot, it got away. Darn mosquitoes. Sorry, sorry, that was an aside, but we're on a witch hunt down here in the south. Okay, so I'm using the bullet tip of my light and dark cherry cobbler blends. Your dogs love radishes? That's kind of weird. That's just kind of weird. I'm going to say, though, Roz, candied parsnips actually sounds pretty good because they're kind of sweet. I, I I actually like them. But this was a really good blend because um, it had baby potato, a baby potato medley. So it had, like, purple potatoes and, and white and yellow. And then it had the radishes and the parsnips and carrots. And it had a whole bunch, it was only supposed to have 15 whole garlic cloves, but I put extra because I like that. And then you, you mix them up with some olive oil and some uh, like steak seasoning and roast them for a while with the, with, their, with the chicken breasts and it was really good. Even Wayne liked it. I was shocked. Hey Mikey, he liked it. Okay. Radishes with my horses. Okay, I have leftover radishes. Was that a trick? Terry, do you know that horses like radishes or is this like to see if they act weird? Because I have halflingers. They're probably going to eat first and <laughs> ask questions later. <laughs> but if it's going to be mean, I don't want to do that. Okay, so now I'm going to go ahead and put this on its little mossy meadow mat. There we go. And then we'll put the DSP strip, and you can see everything starting to come together. Yeah, yeah. Over me. Okay, sorry. Sorry. Okay. And we're just going to put that on right above our little holly sprigs. And I'm kind of using my graph paper to make sure I get it sort of straight and sort of lined up. There we go. Okay. And then I'm going to populate my embossed panel. I think she wants to eat her horses. Try some ra <laughs> Nicely done, Jenny. You're correct. I don't think radishes are the appropriate side with my horses. <laughs> All right. I'm putting my dimensionals on here, but I'm keeping them kind of inside the edges so that I can tuck some holly sprigs in later, okay? <laughs> now, you know, maybe candied radishes with pony would be okay. If the zombie apocalypse comes and I am resorting, I have to resort to eating my ponies, then I will remember <laughs> to 
have a side of her editions. <laughs> Ate all those root veggies for a treat. Oh my goodness, Kathy. Can grow radishes for my horses. For ins I get you. I'm picking up what you're putting down. Has to be easier than carrots. You'd think carrots would be easy, but carrots are not very easy to grow. I'm just saying. Okay, I'm pulling this back to me just a little bit so that I can sort of see what's going on here. And I'm going to put my panel just like that. Okay. Now, fair disclosure, what I should have done was the way I did my original. And instead of, actually, it's not too far off. That's pretty good. I'll take it. Never mind. <laughs> Never mind. All righty. Now, let me make, show you how we're going to make this sentiment. All right. So what I'm going to do, oops, don't go away. I need a really large over, but could feed the whole city. Oh, a really large oven, maybe? Yeah. I think uh, that sounds pretty good. I, I am kind of like officially now a root vegetable fan. I kind of liked it. It was it was good. All right. While I was busy yakking, I left my ink pad open. Okay. So let me show you how these sentiments are in the Yummy Christmas. Um, the first one where it says, uh, oh, I don't want that one. I don't want tis the season. I want wishing you. Let me show it to you. Can you see it? I'm going to ink it up and then you'll be able to see it. Hang on a second. Sending love and light your way is not it. This is just a scrap paper. Okay, you can see wishing you a, and then there's a big gap. And it comes out like that because the idea for this stamp set is that then you could put one of the other sentiments in there. Like, <laughs> well, tell J Daisy I'm happy that she's happy. You could put sweetest, happy, yummy in the middle. So you could have wishing you a happy Christmas or a yummy Christmas. Tis the sweetest season. Tis the yummy season. You could do all of those things. What we're going to do is I'm going to stamp um, happy in cherry cobbler. And then I'm going to do a little quick fussy cutting. Put that aside. Oof, I don't like that. What have I got on there? Something. Let's try that again. There, that's better. That's a more better. All right, and we'll set that aside and then um, fussy cut our little words here. And this isn't really rocket science and there is no um, here or there. So tomorrow on the blog post, it doesn't say, you know, sentiment happy is three quarters of an inch by, it's what it is. Try to get an even margin around your word. Kind of get it as straight as you can. I mean, you know, straight is, Straight is relative. Probably don't need a speed square, but do the best you can. I actually kind of like it looking a little more informal because it's kind of an informal, I mean, this is pretty informal decorations, right? So the fact that these are a little bit uh, wonky, happenstancy, I, I like how that, that works out. But if you're like me, you can aim for perfect and get <laughs> wonky happenstancy without even trying. So, you know, there's that. All right. Okay, uh, okay. And there we go. And now let's go ahead and cut this out, out further. And the last bit so that I can then lose it as it disappears into a sea of little pieces of very vanilla. Let's get rid of this out the way. Look at, look at me making you think I'm an all tidy crafter and all that. And then I take my Mossy Meadow Stampin' Right marker. Straight is overrated. 
She may be joined by a brother or sister next year. No, I am not pregnant. I'm guessing that means another dog is in your future, yeah? That's exciting. Finn just shook his head adamantly. No, he prefers to stay an only child. Thank you very little. Okay, I'm just edging these just so they get a little definition on the card. If you don't like doing this, you can you can skip it, but I kind of like to do it. All righty, here we go. Now, I'm not going to put these on until I have actually put on my trees. All right, because the trees are going to guide everything else. Hi, hey, Jean. Appreciate it. I was thinking that I would love to have used the gold ink on the embossing folder when you emboss a hammer metal. That was doing it. Tons of fun playing with ink. Yeah, it, that might look good. You should try that, Roz, if you make this card. You should absolutely try that. Okay, so now comes the dry fitting portion of the collage making. Okay, so I'm going to put in my holly and find out instantly that I've got a Stampin' Dimensional way too close to the corner there. So we're going to give it a little pry. Just a little pry. Actually, I'm going to just cut it like that, and then it'll be ready, and I'll put it down later. So note to self, don't put your Stampin' Dimensionals too close to the edge. Now here's another little piece of the collage puzzle that I like to do. When I'm dry fitting, I like to actually put the card base on, or the card front onto my card base. Because to me, a collage looks more collage-y if it kind of extends out past your card front. I mean, that's just me. You can certainly do however you like. That'll be on dimensionals right there. But I like that look. And then we'll put this one right here like that. Just like that. And then those are going to be on dimensional, so they will pop up. Then I'm going to have my trees. And they're going to be like this. Oops. All right, so it'll be like so. Okay, I like that. Okay, so let me show you how I did this. I just picked them all three, out, well, most of them up like this, and I glued them together first. Okay, yeah, so now I'm going to move that apart. Don't, so don't worry about picking them all up with your anything. Put a little liquid glue and then um, put your tree back and a little liquid glue and put your tree back. Like that. Okay. And then you can put some dimensionals on the back of that. Here they are. So. <laughs> Yeah, this is a fun set, Mary. You should probably have it. I, um, they're not real, like, realistic-looking trees. Uh, to me, they're they're more cartoony, but I like them. Um, they're kind of a vintage-y, cartoony-looking tree to me. Okay, so we're going to put some of these duhas on here. Okay, and then back to our dry fit. Always dry fit. Always dry fit. You cannot dry fit too much, especially if you're making a collage. All right. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to make my bow. And my bow in this case is going to be not a double loop bow, but instead it's going to be A two strand simple bow that I'm going to make really big loops with. Okay, so big loose bows like that. And it's okay for the ends to stick out. In fact, you kind of want the ends to stick out. 
And what I'm going to do is I'm just going to pop this bow behind the trees like that. Okay. So what I'm going to do is now I don't know if you guys are realizing it, but every time you make a collage, it can really be kind of put together differently. What I'm going to do on this one is I'm going to put a glue dot in the middle of my trees. And I'm going to adhere the bow to the glue dot on the back like that. And then you can see how that's going to be. And then you can just fuss with it a little bit to make it do like you want it to do. Okay. So let's go ahead and put some dimensionals on the back of our holly. And don't don't have a fit, but yes, I am going to murder some dimensionals because it makes sense. You could also use minis, but halves work pretty good. I hear you snickering, Amy. I just hear you snickering. Thanks, Lenny. I hear Amy snickering. Yes, I do. All right, there's one. And we'll put some more here. Ah, oh, let go. Let go of me! Alrighty, here we go. My dimensional covers are departing the fix before they've been cleared in hot. So they're being obstinate and recalcitrant. Oh, goodness gracious. That's okay. We'll stick him under there right now. We're just gonna stick him right under there. If he wants to play that game, I can put two can play that game. Mm-hmm. Two can play that game. We'll just stick him right there. Put my card back on the card front so that I can get a little of that fall off the side that I like. Okay, there we go. And then since I snipped that little dude. I'm going to put a little bit of liquid glue on my snipped. I don't know if you guys can see what I'm doing here, but when I cut that dimensional, it stopped being sticky. So I'm putting a little bit of glue in there so that it'll become sticky again. Cause you know, a sticky dimensional is a happy dimensional. A sticky dimensional is a happy dimensional. And if that is not a saying, it should be. I'm, I mean, really, it should be. I'm going to take this off my cover off of this one see now two seconds ago all it wanted was to get off of there and now it's like oh no now you want me off mm -mm. no okay and we'll stick this little guy under there and then get a few dimensionals on this one Here we go. So now if you were going to make this card, just give yourself the time it's going to take you to, to color because that's kind of not been really demonstrated as how long it takes to color these. It doesn't take forever, but it it's not no time either. So, you know, if you're going to do this, I probably wouldn't call this a card you're going to make 12, 12 bazillion of, just saying. Okay, see, fall out the side, add so much character. Thank you. Cut it before removing the packaging and then it will stay sticky. Yeah, yeah. There's all sorts of ways. I'm just not the, you know, the expert dimensional killer that Amy is. Okay, and we'll set him right there like that. Okay, so now we'll take off our covers behind our trees with our stuck on bow are stuck on the stuck on you and we're gonna put him right come here though I want you to do this you guys ever get a really sticky bunch of sticky stampin dimensionals well I've got them okay there we go okay and then just stick him down like that. Now, all I have to do is dry fit my sentiment. 
add a couple of embellishments and we'll be done with the card front. Like this. Easy peasy. Alright, I like that. So we'll just put a little liquid glue on the back of each piece. Now my other trick for doing this is once you get a layout that you like, when you do your full dry fit, take a picture of it and have it sitting there. Most of us have a camera just happy to be right there helping us. So use it, just saying. But I can't right now because it's busy being my video camera. All right, and then you can kind of play with this how you like. Now I'm gonna add from the most wonderful time. Grr, now I have that annoying line I'll reach you. <laughs> Stuck on you. All right, he sang it a lot better. All right, so now these are the gold faceted stars from the most wonderful time stamp set, or medley, product medley. And I'm just gonna stick one on top of each tree because a Christmas tree needs a star or an angel, or, you know, something like that. I have stars, so it's going to be stars. I love these little stars. Okay? And then I'm going to take a few of the gold glitter dots from the soon-to-be-available Christmas Time is Here Sweet, and add them in and around. This is another little collage trick. Use embellishments as part of your collage. Okay? Which means... You want them to be tucked in to the design. Okay, so not out here, which is fine. It's a fine place for it to be, but in my world, that's not really a, a very a collage kind of element. But when you tuck it in, then it becomes part of the collage. All right. Tanya, you have to act like you've never heard this before. <laughs> in November when I say this all over again. All right, and so there is the card front. All right, so let's go ahead and get the inside. That's going to be a little more coloring, so stick with me. Stick with me, please. And I'm going to use my Stamparaz, and part of the reason I'm doing this is because my tuxedo black is a little dry and oh killer magnets is a little dry and so i want to be sure i'm going to get a good um, image so i i want that stamp apparatus to work so i'm just going to use i'm just going to put that down but i'm going to use the other side of my panel hi patricia yes the uh the christmas time is here sweet is really pretty i like it a lot a lot a lot a lot okay so let's do this this is the yummy christmas stamp set jean and it coordinates with the cuckoo clock dies from the annual catalog and you can get that die set with uh, bundled with the cuckoo for you stamp set that's in the in the holiday catalog or in the annual catalog sorry okay now i'm just sticking the uh, moving the image up to the top right or the top left corner and we're gonna ink it again just like that and i'm gonna wipe off my plate because otherwise i will ruin a perfectly innocent very vanilla panel now, while I have everything kind of sitting here, let me take a moment, a momento. <laughs> the Department of Redundancy Department, is it? <laughs> so, not a Lionel Richie fan, just to be clear, right? <laughs> All right, I'm just putting one of these little holly dudes in the uh, corner of my very vanilla uh, envelope. And then we'll be ready to do some coloring for a minute. Okay, 
Now let's set this aside, put the lid on my ink pad, and you can see uh, what we're going to go for here. We're just coloring these, these, so we're going to do some more coloring. Sorry. Sorry, we got the color. I'm cuckoo for your projects. Oh, that's so sweet. That's, that's nice, Jean. Thank you so much. All right, we're just doing the same again. Light and dark mossy meadow for the leaves. Floodify the inner part with the light and then bring the dark out around the edges and give it a little bit of a blend. There are a lot of people in the world way better with Stampin' Blends than I am. But in the end, it's okay. I'll take it. I'll take it. I wonder why my computer keeps going to the screensaver. Uh, I mean, I know I'm not on, I know I'm not plugged in, but I'm obviously working. So these are the things that make you say, huh. Like the same message I keep getting, I now have three streaming systems that are not going to work with my TV after like the 1st of December, which I think is a total jet. Netflix and Amazon Prime are both not going to support my Sony anymore. What's up with that, people? That's not very fair. I know what it is. They've gone in cahoots with the TV people so that we have to buy a new TV if we want to use those services. I just think it's a jip. And I don't think it's very fair. So, meh. So, yeah. There's that. Hey guys, I was very industrious this past week. I cleaned out my pantry and I organized everything and I found this app for my phone, which still works with my phone, called Pantry Check. And it's pretty cool because you can scan the barcode of stuff and then tell it like, okay, I have five of those cans of soup. And then as you take a can of soup, you can take it off of there and so now when I'm at the grocery store in theory this is all theory it's all theory okay because I have to do it to make it work in theory I can be at the grocery store and go oh I was gonna make a recipe with a can of pinto beans I wonder if I have pinto beans oh I don't know if I have pinto beans so I buy three cans of pinto beans when in fact I have five cans of pinto beans in my pantry so in theory it'll stop me from doing that and hopefully it will also stop me the next time I'm on a military base somewhere and I get to a class six and decide, ooh, I wonder if I have Merlot to cook with or, or whiskey to make my marinade with. And then I think, oh, well, you know what? You probably ought to just buy a bottle. I am embarrassed by the amount of alcohol in my pantry, especially given the fact that I don't actually drink. So I use it all to cook with. Occasionally I'll have a small sip of something, but the calorie has the calorie problem has become a problem. But I have a huge amount. And it isn't, it, you know the part that's hard, Roz, is like today we went to the grocery store and when I got home, I had to scan the stuff in. But once it's in, it's just there and you can call up the app and find it and go, oh look, I do have, our biggest one is always, do, you have, do we have toilet paper? Do we have dishwasher soap? And now, uh, yeah, now I'm gonna know, hello, they're not gonna fool me anymore into buying more of all of those things. All right, I'm putting my uh, old Stampin'Majig plastic panel inside my envelope to color with so that I do not color through because that really annoys me when I do it. But anyway, I think it's gonna, I hope it's gonna be good. I hope it is, because I really have a lot of stuff. I have a lot of food that I need to shop from. I'm even doing it for my freezer, which is nice, because you can add like freezer meals that you've put in there. Or like, for example, us, we will smoke a brisket and then um, we'll freeze like 
umpty bazillion eight ounce or four ounce packets of brisket, smoked brisket. Well, in, we get a hair and decide we're gonna smoke another brisket when we've still got 57 packages of brisket in the freezer. So now I know how many pack, well, sort of I will, once I get it all inventory. I know how much brisket I've got. So I can say, no, Wayne, we don't need to make any more brisket right now. We need to eat from our freezer. It all sounds very, very organized. Yes, see, Roz, that is going to be the exact same way. Having just, oh, yes, well, we have a pantry. We're Costco people. We like to shop at Costco, and so we tend to have a lot of stuff. And I've tried multiple things, and a list on the on the freezer, a list in the cabinet, it all is only as good as how you keep up with it. That is an absolutely true thing. So I'm going to attempt to discipline myself to do this. By golly. By golly. I can do it. I can do it. Okay, let's go ahead and math this up, and we'll be done. App sounds great. However you need it to keep updating it when you use it. Yes, absolutely. So you can just tap it. Like today I used one of my cans of soup. So you can just tap it and delete one. And it went from three cans of soup to two cans of soup. Just like that. Um, and if you're really good, which I'm not, um, you can put in the expiration date. And so it will pull up and you can say, what have I got, you know, that's expiring. Or it'll have, it has a section where you can pull up and see stuff that's expiring soon so that you know how to use it does the app do anything yes there it is that was exactly what i was just saying it it will if you have to put it in um i had a s secret hope that when i scanned the barcode that the barcode would would also include the expiration date but no nope it didn't it did not it did not it did not and that was disappointing but if I can get to where I'm eating when I'm, if I can see the food and know I have it, in theory, I will, I will use it, right? That sounds good. I did get rid of some tomato sauce that I canned in 2014. I decided that was probably needing to go down the, down the drain. And so it did, and that kind of hurt me because I worked very hard to can that. So there you go. Okay, and we'll put some dimensionals on the back of the card front. Full up dimensionals. No little half dimensionals on the card front. Alrighty. And then we'll fix our, uh, do our envelope flap and we'll be done ske. Dunska says to you. And Unamas. Make sure it's right side up. Not that I've ever put the card front on upside down. Oh, I so have. Okay. Alrighty. Do you order dimensionals by the case? Yes, yes, I do. <laughs> yes, yes, I do. Yeah, Sue, it does make sense. And I'm really hoping I keep up with it because otherwise, yeah. But, you know, I, I kept up with, with logging all my food for like two years now. So maybe I'm getting to be a better person. Maybe. Who knows? If that's my litmus test, I may be in trouble. Okay, just a little bit of liquid glue on the envelope flap. The envelope flap. And a little more of the Night Before Christmas DSP. There we go. And a quick fussy cut. And we're done. And a stray dimensional cover. What are the odds? that there would be a dimensional cover somewhere. Okay. And there we be. Oh wait, oh wait, 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 I forgot. I was gonna do one more thing here. 
because I really, really, really love these little gold glitter guys. So I'm going to put a little tiny gold glitter guy right here on the inside and another little tiny gold glitter guy up on the top. Right there. Oh, perfect. Perfect. <laughs> I don't know what has happened to all of my time. Actually, I'm kind of ahead right now. Like, like I already have my card made for like Tuesday, Monday and Tuesday, which is unheard of in the Deathridge household. But otherwise, it does also seem like I don't have any time and I don't quite understand that. All right, there we go, guys. Uh, Yummy Christmas coordinates with the Cuckoo Clock dies, and you can get these dies bundled with the Cuckoo for You stamp set from the annual catalog. So get the bundle and get Yummy Christmas, and uh, you're ready to go for a year or more or even longer. All right, guys, uh, we will see you next week. I hope you have a wonderful and most awesome week. Thank you for spending part of your weekend with me. Bye-bye.